Shed your grace upon us. Shed your grace upon us. Shed your grace upon us now. Shed your grace upon us. Shed your grace upon us. Shed your grace upon us now. If you believe in the stoic self, let's bow your marks and hands of wealth. If all you love is all you have, yeah, I believe in that. And I believe in holding on. Like a prayer, mighty song. I find my patience in the storm. Muted earth and she alone. Yeah, yeah. Shed your grace upon us. Shed your grace upon us. Shed your grace upon us now. Shed your grace upon us, shed your grace upon us, shed your grace upon us now. If you believe in falling rain, home cooked food from mama's hand, 
If you don't overlook all the simple things, oh yeah, you best gonna be our friend. If you believe in boundless blues that touches dust and will undo, the world rocks shadows and the dawn, the grace, the strength to carry on. Yeah, yeah, shed your grace, shed your grace. Good afternoon, and welcome to the memorial service for Gene Butcher. My name is Chris Kincaid. I'm a friend of Sherry Hester's, and I'll be assisting with the technology for today's service. Before we begin, a few housekeeping tips so that everybody's a bit more familiar with Zoom and its features. First, everyone has been muted in an effort to reduce any background noise during the service, and we ask that you remain muted for the duration of the service. We will open it up at the end for anyone to share any thoughts of Jean. To ensure that you see the full presentation, please be sure that your view is set to speaker view and not gallery view. You can do so by going up to the top right corner of the presentation screen and selecting speaker view. As you can see, there is a video option here in Zoom and you have full control of whether the camera is turned on or off. To change the setting, simply move your mouse to the bottom of the screen and a toolbar will pop up. You'll see the start or stop camera icon. Simply click on that and you'll know that the camera is off when there's a thin red line through the camera icon. Finally, you can communicate with us and others through the chat service. To access the chat box, again, move your mouse to the bottom of the screen and access that toolbar that pops up. Select the chat icon, and you can simply type in your message where it says type message here, and simply hit return to submit the message. The chat will also be serving as the guestbook for today, so if you will, please use the chat box right now and let us know your name and how you know Gene or the family. Thank you all for coming today. And now we will get started with the service. I'll pass it over to Reverend Billy Hester, Senior Minister at Asbury Memorial Church. Thank you everybody for joining us today as we celebrate the life of Jean Elizabeth Smith Butcher. We come together today in grief acknowledging our human loss. And may God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, and in death, resurrection. Will you bow with me in prayer? Loving and merciful God, you heal the broken in heart, and to those who have no might, you increase their strength. You comfort the tired and the weary Today, strengthen us in our weakness, calm our troubled spirits, dispel our doubts and fears. We thank you for Jean Smith Butcher, for the gift of her life, for the treasure that she was, and for the treasure she continues to be in our memories and in your eternal heart. We give thanks that for Jean, death has passed and pain has ended. 
and that she has now entered the joy of the home you have prepared for her. We ask your peace and comfort be with Sherry and me, our children, and all of Jean's relatives and friends. Give us faith to see beyond touch and sight. And where vision fails, help us to trust your love, which never fails. May we bravely walk our earthly way and look forward to our glad reunion with Jean in eternity. Amen. Hi everyone, I'm Bob Smith. My dad was also Bob Smith. He was Gene's brother. So to me and my siblings, Anne, Randy, and Rick, she will always be Aunt Jean. My first memory goes back to when she and Uncle Butch lived just outside of Baltimore, off of Liberty Road. We were playing in their backyard and I fell, skinned my knee on the patio, and Aunt Jean rushed over to take care of me. Aunt Jean was very likely the happiest person I ever knew. She often told the world this was so, broadcasting one of the biggest smiles whenever one was fortunate enough to make eye contact. I always felt better leaving a visit with her, no matter how short, than when I arrived. Throughout the years I attended grad school in the evening, when she and Uncle Butch lived in Columbia, Maryland, she made me stop by for dinner before every class. Those evenings, the conversations we had were always an oasis, no matter what else was going on in life. 
I recall she had a funny thing about funerals and kids. When my siblings and I lost our first grandparent, she took care of us. When I had trouble sleeping that first night, she made me a tomato sandwich and sat and talked about things, anything but a funeral. She's been many miles away for many years down in Savannah, but never forgotten, always in my heart. There's a hole now that cannot be filled, but whenever I think of it, I can't help but smile. No matter what I'm doing, I believe I'm smiling back at her. The Magnolia sapling photos in the beginning was sent to me by a good friend who had heard of our loss. There will be a spot in our yard where a tree will become a permanent reminder of Aunt Jean watching over us. <laughs> Smiling, of course. Hi, my name is Betsy True, and I've known Jean Butcher since I was about 12 years old. And I am thrilled to be a part of this celebration of her life. And I just wanted to share just a short vignette about uh, what I remember about her. Uh, Mama Jean was always uh, available whenever I would come over to Sherry's house after school always had the best snacks after school, awesome. They had in their garage a, a soda uh, delivery where it was like the, it was like a, slow, a soda factory. There were so many soda flavors that they could put together. It was thrilling for me. Um, and uh, of course, an infectious smile, but also a killer hug. If Mama Jean was coming in to give you a hug, just get ready, because when she got you, she isn't letting you go. It was kind of like a death grip of love in there. So uh, I'd like to, to lift up and celebrate Jean Butcher's wonderful bear hugs. And uh, she was always holding on to give you the love and uh, support that she uh, so generously uh, had to share with so many of us. Uh, so uh, lots of love to the whole Hester family and lots of love to you, Jean Butcher. You were, uh, your household was like a, like a, a family, a second family to me. And um, in knowing Sherry for these almost 50 years, you were a big part of that experience. Uh, so thank you.
I'll never forget those hugs. <laughs> Hi, Sherry. I'm going to share a story of the first memory I have of your mom, and that's her leading this little discussion group that I was in. Uh, just six kids at Brightwoods Elementary, our first year um, in the school and our fourth grade year. You were not in the group. That wouldn't have been appropriate because your mom was doing some kind of study and I think for a degree that she was getting. And she must have liked me because I'm pretty sure she called my mom and said, let's get our girls together. And together we were from then on for years and years. Uh, you were my bosom buddy. And your mom really facilitated that. She gave you to me. And I will always be grateful. To her for that gift. So Sherry and I did the tour of Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat together and when the tour went to Baltimore we stayed at Sherry's house with her parents. Now the theater was downtown and parking was difficult to find and Sherry's mother really worried a lot about this. So every night when we'd come home from the theater, the house would be dark, her parents would be sleeping, and every night we'd walk in and out of the darkness we'd hear, Sherry, did you find a place to park? And Sherry always said, yes, mom. But I always wanted to say, actually, you know, we drove around, we missed the show, and we came home. We used to tease her mom about this, and she had a great sense of humor because she always laughed. Hey Sherry, I've been thinking about which story to share and really what I realized I wanted to share with you was it wasn't one particular opportunity or time that I was with your mom that really has made the imprint. It was what it was like to be around her. When we would arrive, because they would come visit you in the city all the time, and when your friends would arrive with you, your mother would greet us with such joy. She'd be like, oh, yes, yes, we get to play today. Yes, yes, yes. And we all felt so loved by her. So the thing I want to share with you is the unbounding joy that your mother had for life, for your dad, for you, and everyone that crossed your path. She greeted with such love, such joy, and passed that on to us. So I thank you, Jean. We'll miss you. And I know and I see that unending joy in your daughter, Sherry, every day. Love you. I'll be reciting a poem that I wrote for Jean and Thurman Butcher, or my Grammy and Pappy, for their 50th anniversary, which was in 2005. Now, that means I was 10 years old when I wrote this, so I probably couldn't have done it without the help of my mom. Grammy and Pappy, I love you. And you love me no matter what I do. You give me olives and push-ups and all kinds of food. You always know how to put me in a good mood. I can bike to your house because it's less than a mile. When I get to your door, Grammy's there with a smile. Pappy gives me a hug and then we go play to Hope Park or basketball for a fun-filled day. When we go back inside, Grammy's there with our dinner. No matter what she makes, it's always a winner. Then it's off to the tub to go take a bath. Believe it or not, it is better than math. 
It's been 50 years since you said I do. Happy anniversary, Grammy and Pappy. I love you. Good afternoon. <laughs> wow. Who would have thought we were going to be doing this <laughs> in this way? Um, but I am so grateful, so grateful for this opportunity. Um, I'm so grateful for all of you who have come today to share this. It means so much to me and I know it means so much to my mommy. So I am grateful that we've been able to do this in such a way to really celebrate my mom and have a party with so many of you that would not have been able to come had we just had it here in Savannah. Um, I'm Sherry, by the way, Sherry Hester. Jean Butcher was my mommy. And I was her only daughter, her only child. So I'm excited to be able to celebrate her because I think she deserves a party. I think she is so worthy of celebration. I'd just like to share with you um, a few thoughts on why I feel that way. Well, let's just start with the obvious, shall we? Her smile. <laughs> Her smile. So it was so beautiful hearing from a lot of you through, uh, through sympathy cards, through Facebook notes, um, through messages here on the Evite and phone calls. And it was, it was a consistent um, theme. <laughs> Her smile. I would say 90% of the people who have responded have talked about her smile. It was something else. It was big and it was constant. <laughs> and you know what's interesting is when we were when I was growing up, her smile actually bothered me. It embarrassed me because my mom had this way of going where she went the smile went before her and you know what I'm talking about the smile was on her face from the moment she entered a room and it was almost like she went in in the anticipation of who am I going to meet today who can I connect with right now wherever I am I want to connect with someone so it was not just the smile it was the energy of right? Like she was out there. And when we were just going to the grocery store to like get a lemon or something, <laughs> and she'd be like, hey, hello. Oh, what a cute little girl. Oh, where did you get that face? I want that. Oh, look. Oh, how's your day going? I'm like, mom, chill it, chill it. We just want a lemon and we just want to get, get out of here. And I'm sure that they don't want to be having a conversation with you. Well, as is the case, um, I see now, the older that I have gotten, how wise she was. Because so many people wanted to connect, needed to connect. And this is why she made such an incredible career choice in being a high school guidance counselor. She connected with so many people, so many students. It, wherever we went, there was usually somebody, some adult that had been her student. And the theme was always the same. Thank you so much. You cared. You listened. You listened when no one else would. When, when horrible things were happening in my house, I knew I would come to you and you would smile and you would hug me. Back in the, those days, she could hug her students. <laughs> and I didn't realize that we all want and need to connect. And my mom knew that. That's what she lived for, to connect with people. And her smile was how she did that. 
I, I am going to quote my dear friend Margaret Clay, who wrote something very sweet and deals with her smile. She said, your mom is always smiling, always laughing, always welcoming. She made me. She said she was adopting me as one of hers. She had always wanted a pile of kids. Never mind how many people she said that to. No one else had ever wanted to adopt me. She had a great laugh and a wagging pointy finger with a cocked head. Eye contact said it all. I remember when she first told me that she was starting to forget things, that she was worried that she was losing her mind. I told her we all forget things, but we both knew that there might be more. Then came the day when she forgot that she forgot. She still laughed and waved. It didn't matter to either of us if she recognized me. The salutation was genuine for all. She loved who she loved with her whole heart. She welcomed everyone with generous abandon. Thank you, Margaret, for those words. And Julie Varlin said, your mom's smile was transformative. I just loved that word. Thank you, Julie. And my sister, Tammy, said she was a special lady that let me call her mom for four years of my life. Now she and dad will be together. And my friend Bill Graham said, your mother was a wonderful, joyful presence. It was an honor to have spent time with you and both your parents. They were extraordinarily kind and respectful in a way that no parent had ever been when I was dating their daughter. I hope your loss is softened by the love, humanity, and faith that they have left with you. And your mother made a tomato sandwich that I have never forgotten, and I have never been able to duplicate. Thank you, Bill. And I really loved his reference to a tomato sandwich because that leads me into my next, excuse me, into my, lect, my next phase is that my mom, when I think of my mom, besides the smile, she was just the ultimate mom. I mean, she was mom. She was super mom. If you look in the dictionary under the word mom, I'm sure my mom's name is there. It says Jean Butcher because she defined mom. Everything that you think of, it's like, it's, it's, it, she was mom. And one thing about moms, she could cook. And she did it often. And she loved to cook for you. She loved for you to eat her cooking. So when Bill mentioned the tomato sandwich, there were other people that mentioned the tomato sandwiches too. And I just thought that was so, so beautiful because that meant a lot to her. If people, if she knew, well, she does know now that she's being remembered for her cooking, that would definitely make her smile. And you know what else she's remembered for? Her crab cakes. They were so good that they scored me a husband. I tell you, I think that one tipped Billy over when he tasted her crab cakes. <laughs> because he was from Savannah, Georgia, where he loved his crab cakes here. And when a Maryland woman could beat his favorite crab cake, I think he was all in. And then of course, when we're talking about mom's kitchen, we have to remember her sourdough bread that she made from scratch, from a starter, and her dill dip that she put in the middle of that sourdough bread. She did that for years. You know, you have to feed it. You have to feed it every week. And she did it for years. She gave, passed it on to me. I did it for years. And later on, I didn't know that my mom was suffering from dementia for quite a while because my father hid it very well. 
And I learned later on that when my mom couldn't make it anymore, my dad was making it. And I didn't know that. He, they would always show up with the sourdough bread and the dill dip at family gatherings and functions. But my dad had made it. Another thing about my mom being the ultimate mom, the super mom, was that the house was always ready for And boy, did she love company. You better not be within 10 miles of our house and not stop by. I know that Kevin uh, McDonough has said the same thing. And, uh, and you'll hear my cousin Bob mention, mention something as well. But because I was an only child, I think my mom went overboard, always making sure I had playmates and people around, around me. Um, I went on many a vacation with friends accompanying me. We had many people staying at our house. I, we had a foreign exchange student from France stay with us for quite a few months. We had one of my friends who was in uh, school with me. Her family was moving near the end of school and she wanted to finish the school year out. So my mom said, my mom and dad said, let's just let her stay with us. So she did. And then of course, my wonderful foster sister, Tammy, who I was able to enjoy for the last four years of my time at home. Uh, she stayed with us and that was amazing. Um, my mom, not a, my mom was a super mom. Do you know that back in the day when women did not work full time, she was working full time. She was a high school guidance counselor. She also got her master's degree. I didn't, it was amazing to me because I knew she worked. I knew she had a job, but she was always there. I never felt like my mom was a working mom. I felt like my mom was always home. My mom left a little earlier than me in the mornings and came home just a little bit later than I did. But besides that, she was all in. She was there cooking and cleaning and making sure she would make sure I had my lunch, making sure I ha always had my quarters if I was going out so I could call. That's my parents ran a very tight ship as far as communication. So it was before cell phones and we had to know, my parents wanted to know where everybody was all the time. Um, and if I ever went out, we had a pad right there in the kitchen that we had to write down the time, where we were going and when we were expected back. And if we, if we weren't ex going to make it on time, then I had to call and they had to do the same thing with me because if we were more than five or 10 minutes late, the police were gonna get a call. Um, but one thing that, that I loved was that, you know, I, I talked about this at my daddy's funeral. My mom and my dad did everything together. I mean, everything. Like they went to the gas station together to get fuel in the car. They would go to the grocery store together. They would go to the bank together. And, at, you know, growing up, I thought that's just a little bit excessive, don't you think? But later now I realize that they were grabbing moments to be together. It wasn't about the gas station. It wasn't about the grocery shopping. It was just about being together. So I really respect that. My mom taught me how to sew. I love that. That's a mom thing. She passed that on to me and she made many of my clothes. She even made a few of my prom dresses. Um, my mom loved to dance. She didn't get many opportunities to dance because my father didn't enjoy it as much as she did. But what's interesting is that she met my dad at a dance at the YWCA when he was on leave. And he must have danced that night because that's how he met her. But if you were to put on music any time, you would see my mom my mom's shoulders start moving, her body would start going. She could not be still if there was music in the room. As many of you know, my mom suffered from dementia and what 
one reason I'm really celebrating today is because she can smile again. At the end, she couldn't even smile. She lost the ability to communicate by words probably four years ago. And for someone whose who communication was everything, I know that must have been so difficult. So today is a day of celebration. Not only can she express herself again, but she can dance and she can dance with my dad. I, you know, I don't know how she stayed here for as long as she did after my daddy passed. But the one thing that I think kept her here was her curiosity. She was always really, I like to call it nosy, but she was always curious, always had to know what was going on. And I would sometimes go into her room, even though she really didn't respond a lot, she was always looking and trying to figure out what was going on. Well, I'm gonna end with what I put on my Facebook page because when I wrote that, it was just very spontaneous. And sometimes I think that that's heartfelt. So, my mommy left this earth. The woman who gave me birth the woman who made home cooked meals for me almost every day of my life until I was 18. The woman who worked full time and yet I never felt like she wasn't there. The woman who touched so many lives as a high school guidance counselor. The woman who loved my daddy with all her heart. The woman who loved to dance, yet didn't do it often enough. The woman who would do anything in the world for me. She's gone to be with my dad, and I know that reunion was magical. You were the bestest mommy in the world, Jean Butcher. Now, you can be whole and complete dance as much as you want. I love you, Mommy. The autumn leaves drift by the window. The autumn leaves are very cold. Since you went away, the days grow the days grow long, and soon I'll hear old winter song. But I miss you most of all, my darling. When autumn leaves start to fall.
Thanks again, everybody, for being with us today. You know, we had a very special graveside service for Jean soon after her death. But due to the virus, of course, it was just with immediate family. It's so nice to be able to celebrate this incredible life and wife and mother and grandmother and aunt and friend and guidance counselor and cook with so many people who knew and loved her. We know that this is even going out to Thurman's relatives in Missouri and, and uh, of course, to Gene's relatives in Maryland and other parts of the country north of us. We're so glad that those people can share in this also. They loved Gene too. I do want to say that without Gene and Thurman, Asbury Memorial Church wouldn't be what it is today. Through their support of Sherry and me, for their willingness to move to Savannah and help raise our four children, through their constant physical presence and attendance at Asbury, and through their financial gifts, these two people who had careers in the public school system were some of the top financial givers in our faith community. Their love, support, and commitment 
are a big reason for the success of Asbury. I also want to give a shout out to my wife, Sherry. She was an only child who was spoiled rotten because two parents could not have loved a daughter any more than they loved Sherry. I didn't think it was possible for that kind of love to be returned in such a great amount, but Sherry did in the way she has taken care of both of her parents these last number of years. And finally, I want to say a personal thank you to Jean for making the best crab cakes that have ever been made on this planet. We're going to end the service with doing something that Jean would have loved. She loved dance band music. She loved the song Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy. And she loved our local singing group, The Girlfriends. So we've got The Girlfriends singing Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy. Feel free to dance wherever you are, because Jean sure would be if she was here. And I'm sure she's dancing now in eternity about it. After the song, you are welcome to stay on, as many of us will, and share any thoughts you might have about Jean. We're kind of pretending that we're over in the social hall having a, a reception and, and continuing to tell stories about Jean and celebrating her life. We understand that you might need to take off, but if you're able, please feel free to stay on with us. And now let's have the benediction, and then we'll have the song. Many of our Asbarians know this one. We use it a lot. Life is short, and we don't have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So, be swift to love and make haste to be kind. Amen. Thank you.